And we begin with our former FBI agent and Navy SEAL, Jonathan Gillum, who's here to weigh in on this. He's also the author of the book, Sheep No More. Um, Mr. Gillum, thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry that it's, it's not a better time. Um, I'd like to start with a, a sound bite from the president this morning and I'll get your reaction. Let's listen in. It is not enough to simply take actions that make us feel like we are making a difference. We must actually make that difference. In times of tragedy, the bonds that sustain us are those of family, faith, community, and country. These bonds are stronger than the forces of hatred and evil. All right, Jonathan, what did you think of the president's response? I thought he was uh, he's spot on with what he's saying that um, I mean, in, in a roundabout way, he's saying we got to look at what's effective and uh, we have to push forward. Even in these times uh, when when these things happen, we have to take a step back and identify what the real problem is here. And here's my fear for this is that constantly what, instead of looking at an effective solution, we get uh, bogged down in a in political rhetoric and with activists and people that want to just simply talk, in this case, we, they want to talk about guns. It's like when we have a white cop shoot a, a black uh, person in the inner city, they want to talk about racism when, instead of talking about the, the uh, degradation of the inner city. So I, I think that is the biggest problem that we have here, and I think the president is hitting on it. He's, I, I haven't heard a president in recent history um, or a politician, for that matter, that speaks like he does when he talks about finding solutions. Yeah. And that's very uplifting. Yeah, and Jonathan, just to play devil's advocate a little bit, because you know I think people are so passionate and, and so angry, right, about this happening again, as we all are, no matter if you're on the political right or left. Um, but policies do have to be a part of those very concrete solutions like you talk about, like the president talked about. Policy does have to be a part of it, and those advocating for gun reform or those for greater mental health coverage, for example, Newsmax.com is leading with a story today about the shooter's mental health. Either way, policies have to be involved in the response somehow, don't they? Well, I mean, sure, but policies are going to um, set the legal standards for things, but here's the reality. Um, you know, when I left the SEAL teams in 2002, I was an air marshal for a little while, and then I went and worked for a company called AMTI. And we did threat assessments all over this country for Homeland Security. That's where I came up with the idea for this book all the way back then. We were screaming. I mean, we, we couldn't say it loud enough. It was all special forces guys doing these threat assessments from the attacker's point of view. And we were saying constantly that People need to start securing their locations. They need to look at these things from the attacker's point of view, and they need to understand that the facilities themselves and the, the, those people who run those facilities can secure them, and the population can be secured. But for some strange reason, the political rhetoric in these policies lead people away from protecting themselves. And that is a major, that is the major problem. That's why these shootings continue to happen. Yeah, that's a perfect segue to uh, another conversation about the response. The school, the high school, had mm -hmm. one resource officer on campus there to keep the students safe. So do you think that schools, like you just mentioned, schools need more officers? Or do perhaps mm -hmm. teachers and administrators need to be better trained? Um, or is this something that children, the children, the teenagers themselves, need to be trained on how to respond to an active shooter situation? And, and then people also were talking about metal detectors in schools. You know, what is your advice, having been there and been through these these um, trainees that you just mentioned, what's your advice to keep schools safer? Well, for, first of all, I think that we could, without any policy changes, uh, we could have uh, the president could take it upon himself to get operators like myself together and do uh, threat assessments on a handful of schools. And by and large, um, there's only going to be a few things that differentiate between from school to school. It's going to be are they uh, are they vertical? Or do they not have second stories? You know, there's different aspects of the layout, but overall, the same vulnerabilities and the same type of attacks, the same type of avenues of approach. Once we understand that, 
we can share that knowledge with other schools and then they can sit down with the parents, with the administrators, with local law enforcement, with the fire chiefs, and they can sit down and determine for their school, this is the avenue of approach and, uh, that an attacker would take and this is the type of attack. And then they can determine how many doors do we have to have unlocked from the outside? Can we lock a bunch of these doors where you can't enter and then force people to come in through a bottleneck? And then if that's the case, and I've been talking about this for two days now, could we get uh, put out the call to former law enforcement and veterans uh, to come in and, and volunteer 10 to 20 hours a month? And they could be screened by law enforcement, go through a little, make sure they can shoot on on a uh, on a range, and then give them a concealed weapons carry permit and let them go out there and stand a post. Yeah. So you eliminate the ways to get in, you secure it by putting people out there. And, but here's ultimately, this is what it is. See, everything I'm telling you has nothing to do with the government. It literally has nothing, even if the president didn't take it upon himself to do this. Schools buildings, stadiums and arenas, they can do this themselves and they must start doing it. If yeah. we don't come up with effective solutions and we allow these political policies to rule, people are going to continue to die.